such a, a great joy and a great honor to come together and to celebrate World Toilet Day together. I know this World Toilet Summit has been going on for two days. You've had so many distinguished speakers and have spoken about so many of the essential elements regarding toilets, regarding hygiene, regarding sanitation, regarding water, regarding all of this. But we know that menstrual hygiene, menstrual health, is one of the core critical elements when we speak not only of health and hygiene, but when we speak about empowerment, when we speak about gender equality, when we speak about upliftment, when we speak about peaceful and sustainable societies. If you look at almost any of the sustainable development goals, in some way or another, almost all of them can come back to the topic of menstrual hygiene and menstrual health because it is so core for half of the world's population, for all of the women here on Earth. Therefore, for their children, therefore, for the companies that they work in, therefore, for the societies that they are leading. So I'm really, really honored and excited about this panel. And I wanted to just begin by giving everyone something to think about. Imagine for a moment, whether you're a man or a woman, imagine that your daughter or your sister or your mother, or if you're a man, your wife, if you're a woman, yourself, are going away for seven years. You're going to go someplace for the next seven years of your life. Now, whether it's a beautiful holiday, whether you're going off to university and then a graduate program, whether you are going off to a job in a foreign country, whatever it may be that you're embarking on, you're going to one place for the next seven years. How much time, energy, effort are you going to put in to making sure that that place is comfortable, that it's clean, that it's safe. You're sending your daughter off to not just a four-year university, but to a seven-year program, university, then three years of graduate school. How much time and energy are you going to put in to making sure that where she is is comfortable, it's safe, but not just safe physically, that it's also empowering. Imagine for a moment that your daughter is going off to a university or to a job or somewhere that's physically safe, but what you know is that they don't think very well of women and that they're very disparaging toward women, that they pass a lot of comments about women and that they put women down. They make them feel lower, less than. Would you let your daughter go? Would you let your mom go, your wife go? And I begin with this example because the average woman spends seven years of her life menstruating. Seven years. We go away to a hotel for one night and we're searching online everything. Does it have this? Does it have that? What are the rooms like? What are the facilities like? We book a vacation for seven days or 10 days or two weeks. We spend hours and hours and hours, maybe days, planning that holiday, making sure every minute and every moment is comfortable and perfect. But seven years where we, our sisters, our mothers, our wives, spend seven years do we give it more than a passing thought? So menstruation, menstrual hygiene, menstrual health is a critical element for women 
as well as for men. Because if you love any menstruating woman in your life, this is where she's spending seven years. I remember when I first came to India, and I come from a background of psychology. My undergraduate degree and graduate degree are both in psychology. And I remember when I first came hearing so many of the girls and women say, I'm down. Oh, I can't do this, I'm down. Or, I'm down today. And to me, coming from a psychology background, I thought that meant I'm depressed, I'm sad, I'm not in a good mood today. And so I would always say things like, no problem. Let's go to Ganga Arati. Let's go to the temple. Let's pray. Let's go have a bath in Ganga. And they would say, oh, no, no, I can't. I'm down. And it wasn't until I'd been in India for a good year or two that I finally found out that in the local colloquial slang, I'm down means I'm menstruating. And it hit me very, very deeply because, sure, many of us suffer a little bit of physical discomfort ranging from barely noticeable to even severe. We get menstrual cramps. There's a whole variety of methods between hot water bottles or pain medication to deal with it. So it's not always fun to menstruate, but down? Something that turns my entire experience of life on earth from up to down? It really hit me that all of these women and girls were down. And that this was the, the, the slang, the way of speaking about it. Oh, I'm down. And so I have a, a very personal mission. And something that through our Global Interfaith WASH Alliance, we've been really working to bring into to schools, to groups of women, whenever I address women and girls, is, no, I'm not down. I'm up. Yes, I may, of course, have a little bit of pain. But we all get headaches every now and then. We all get pain in our back every now and then. We get stomach aches now and then. Nothing to make you down. The reason that women menstruate, as we know but we forget, is because that power of the divine creator is within us. Wherever there is not menstruation, pre-puberty, post-menopause, in the male gender, you cannot create. Life cannot be created from a being that does not menstruate. And so menstruation means I have that creative power within me. Now, we worship the creator. And we worship that creative energy. Whether we're worshiping the creator as Lord Brahma, whether we're worshiping the creative energy as Shakti, it is worshipable. It is divine, it is sacred. And that energy is within us. Which means that as we speak about menstrual health and hygiene, it's not just physical health and hygiene. It's our mental and emotional and psychological and spiritual health and hygiene that must also be taken care of through realizing I'm not dirty, I'm not diseased. I'm not impure. I am the embodiment of creative energy. And again, yes, okay, I may have some pain. And yes, I may have to take some extra steps to stay physically clean in these days. But that doesn't change the innate core purity and divinity of who I am. And the reason that this is so important aside from the spiritual and psychological components, is that the stigma around menstruation impacts the women and the girls so strongly that in a country like India, for example, almost 25% of girls 
drop out of school when they start menstruating simply because they don't have access to menstrual hygiene education, so they don't know properly how to take care of themselves. Well over 50% of them only find out about menstruation when they start menstruating. It's such a taboo topic that mothers are not even teaching their daughters. Elder sisters are not teaching their younger sisters. We're not learning about it in schools. More than half the women learn what menstruation is when they start bleeding. Think about the panic, the fear, the confusion that all of these girls go through. And then, without access to the education, without access to ways of staying clean and hygienic and healthy, without proper toilets, in their schools that have doors that are clean, that are private, they drop out of school. So you end up in a situation with a whole population not being able to be educated and empowered and uplifted. And what that means is that we have no hope of actually creating the societies that we want to live in, the communities that we need to live in in the world. So. That's where the taboo and the stigma is essential to be removed. Lastly, there's so much to say, but lastly for now, as we speak about this, it's really important for us not to think, not to work, and not to speak in vacuums or in silos. A lot of us working in the field of development tend to get really narrowly focused. And it's great on one level to be concentrated on what you do. On the other hand, it's essential to realize how interlinked and interlocked and interwoven all of the sustainable development goals are. All of the aspects of health on planet Earth are. So for example, when you take menstrual hygiene and health, if you look at it in a vacuum, if you look at it in a silo, if you look at it with blinders on, many people think that the best solution is maxi pads. Get maxi pads to all the girls in the world. Teach them how to use them. Give them to them. Let these girls have access to maxi pads. Boom, problem solved. That's true if we lived in a vacuum. The dilemma is that those maxi pads then actually end up creating so much pollution on our planet. One statistic I'll share with you. Here, just in India, 2,200 crore, that's 2,200 crore, or for those of you who don't speak in lakhs and crores, that's 22,000 million or 22 billion, 22 billion maxi pads are disposed of every year in India. 22 billion pads a year thrown on the side of the road, in our alleyways, in our waterways. That is 220 thousand kilometers, if you stacked them one on top of the other, 220,000 kilometers, it's halfway to the moon, my friends, of maxi pads every year. It means in two years, if you could walk on those maxi pads, you'd reach the moon. So all we've done is we've taken one problem, lack of menstrual health and hygiene. And our solution to it creates another problem, land pollution. But it actually gets even worse because, of course, those 2,200 crore pads, 22 billion pads, are soaked in menstrual blood. So they're full of bacteria. They then end up in our waterways. They then end up polluting the water that we drink that irrigates our fields. So it seeps into our soil, it seeps in our groundwater, it seeps in our rivers. A lot of people then think, still in the silo, all right, let's burn them. 
So there's a lot of people who think that the incinerator, for example, is then the solution to the ground pollution from the menstrual pads. But all the incinerator does is it takes ground pollution, water pollution, and it turns it into air pollution. So you see these are the dilemmas of this siloed thinking, this vacuum thinking. And that's where, as we come together, we have to realize our planet is a tapestry, a beautiful tapestry that's created from these interweaving threads of menstrual health and hygiene, of environmental protection, of access to clean water, of all of these different beautiful threads of the sustainable development goals we have. And so, for example, here, the solution is very simple. Eco-friendly, reusable menstrual pads, which, by the way, then, addresses so many issues of poverty, of rural development, of gender equality, of women's empowerment, because what you end up with, then, are women's groups in rural villages making menstrual pads. They end up with livelihoods. They end up with money in their pockets. And we end up with an eco-friendly solution that ends up helping the girls, helping the women, helping the societies, and keeping the environment clean.